As we work with integrals, often we come up with an integral that we cannot solve using our various integral tricks. So we're going to talk about another strategy for integration we can use. And that's going to be the question of how do we use a table of integrals. And what I want to notice is that our textbook has in its appendix a table of integrals that will help us out. It starts off with some basic integrals. Most of these integrals we already know, followed by some trig integrals. Most of these we can solve using our trig tricks that we talked about in the past couple of lessons. Some exponential integrals. It includes hyperbolic integrals, which we didn't really talk about in this course, but there they are. Inverse trig integrals. And then the next one, starting with number 68 here, are the ones we'll probably use the most. And these are various places where we see a sum or a difference of squares. So if we have a sum of squares, some of these formulas will help us out. If we have a difference of squares where the variable u comes first, these formulas can help us out. If we've got a difference of squares where the constant a squared comes first, and then it includes some weird ones where we've got a linear term and a quadratic term together, and then just linear integrals that can help us out. So a whole bunch of integrals in there that can help us out. And just to kind of summarize our tables then, start out with the basic integrals, then the trig integrals the exponential and the log integrals, inverse trig integrals, and also the hyperbolics, which I skipped because we're not spending time on that in this course. And then we see a bunch that are called a squared plus u squared. These are problems like if you see a 25 plus x squared because 25 is really 5 squared. So that's the a squared. Or you could even see one sometimes that will look something like x squared plus 7. With addition, the order doesn't matter. The 7 might not look like a perfect square, but technically it is. We can say 7 is the square root of 7 squared. And then we could use the square root of 7 in those formulas. After that, there's the difference formulas where we've got u squared minus a squared. Notice the u, the variable, appears first. Those are different than if we have the a squared minus u squared, which come next. Then they have some that are called 2au minus u squared. Those would be examples like if I had 6x minus x squared. You see the 6x can be rewritten as 2 times 3 times x. And so the 3 would be the a in those formulas. But we could even see something like 5x minus x squared. In that case, uh, we would still have to do 2 times the a. So a would be 5 halves times x. And we'd use 5 halves for the a. And then it wraps up with a plus bu. To practice using these tables, the best thing to do is just try problems. Problems can look like a lot of different ways. And then if we manipulate them a little bit, massage them to be in the format we want, we'll find that we can actually use those formulas in some unexpected places. So let's do a couple examples. Let's call this b examples. So for our first example, we're going to do the integral of 4x squared times the square root of 5 plus 4x squared dx. Now, one thing I notice about this problem is we've got something, the 5, plus an x squared. That kind of feels like one of the a squared plus u squared problems. So we need to identify what a and u are going to be. Now, a is going to be pretty straightforward, that a is going to be the square root of 5. 
so that a squared is 5. But for the u, we're going to do a little bit of work with it because we just want to have one variable squared, and we have 4x squared. So we're going to let u equal the square root of 4x, which is 2x, which means if we're going to make this substitution, du has to be equal to 2dx. So we're going to need to multiply by a 2 and a 1 half so that we have that 2dx we want. Also noticing we've got the 4x squared there. That's going to become our u squared. So now the formula becomes 1 half times the integral of u squared times the square root of 5 plus u squared du. And now we're ready to go after one of those formulas that has a squared plus u squared. The formula we look at is going to need to have a u squared and then the square root of our a squared plus u squared. Let's see if we can find it. So I'm going to start with the a squared plus u squared, because that's what's under the square root. And one thing I notice is number 69 there actually is very similar, exactly identical, to the one we're looking for. So 69 is going to be our formula. So I've copied formula 69 on here. What we see is we've got a u squared. u we've identified as 2x. And we've got an a squared. a we've identified as the square root of 5. And so all we need to do is go into this formula that says it's going to be equal to u over 8. Well, u is 2x over 8 times a squared, the square root of 5 squared, plus 2u, which is 2x squared. Let's put square brackets on that times the square root of a squared. a is the square root of 5 squared plus u, which is 2x squared, minus a, which is the square root of 5 to the fourth power, divided by 8, times the natural log of u, which is 2x, plus the square root of a, which is the square root of 5 squared, plus u, which is 2x squared, plus a constant. And so this formula has helped us build the antiderivative of our expression. We're going to do a little cleanup, though. Uh, let's see, 2 over 8 is 4, so we have x over 4 times the square root of 5 squared is 5, plus 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8x squared times the square root of root 5 squared is just 5, plus 2 squared is 4x squared, minus the square root of 5 to the fourth power is 25 over 8, natural log of 2x plus the square root of 5 plus 4x squared plus a constant. And we've got our antiderivative using that table formula. Now, as I said, these come in many shapes and sizes. The trick is to massage them to get them in the format that matches the table. So let's try another one. And then I'll leave you after that to practice some of these, because that's the best way to get really good at these. We're going to do the integral of x minus 3 over the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 25 dx. Now, we've got all of our tools at our disposal to find this integral. And one thing we might be tempted to do is try u substitution, because if we can get this to simplify to 1 over the square root of u, or u to the negative 1 half, this will simplify really nicely. And notice what happens. If we make u equal to x squared plus 6x plus 25, du becomes 2x plus 6. Well, we've almost got that. If I multiply by 2 inside, 1 half outside, that'll give us 2x minus 6. 
Well, we want to have 2x plus 6. So let's massage a little bit more. To massage a little bit more, to get that minus 6 to become a plus 6, we could add 12 to it. But to stay balanced, we're going to add 12 and subtract 12. That way, the first part becomes the 2x plus 6 that we want. The second part, the minus 12, will take care of that separately. Let's divide that square root by both parts. When we do, we end up with 1 half times the integral. The left part in red simplified to the 2x plus 6 that we wanted over the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 25 dx. The right side minus, we still have the 1 half in front of the integral. We have 12 over that denominator of the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 25 dx. So we split it into two integrals on that minus sign. The nice part about that is the left integral we can actually solve using our old methods. Using that exact u substitution that we just talked about, we have 1 half times the integral of u to the negative 1 half du, which we know the integral of that is going to be u to the positive 1 half times 2 with a 1 half out in front of it. Well, the 2's divide out. We just have u to the 1 half which is the square root of u, which we know is x squared plus 6x plus 25. So that first integral becomes really nice when we break it up. The second integral does not become as nice, though. We don't really have a formula in our integral table for x squared plus 6x plus 25. But we do have formulas if we can simplify what's under the square root, simplify it to u squared plus a squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the left parts that have the variable, and we're going to complete the square on those parts. To complete the square, we take the 6 divided by 2 and square it. We're going to add 9 to get that to be a perfect square. But to stay balanced, we also have to subtract 9. So looking at what that gives us, if we pull the constant of 12 out front, that becomes 12 over 2 or minus 6 times the integral of 1 over the square root of the left stuff now is a perfect square, x plus 3 squared plus 25 minus 9 is 16. And now we've got that u squared plus a squared feeling, where u is going to be equal to the x plus 3. du is just the dx, which is nice. We don't have to do any substitution. And the a is the square root of 16, or 4. Again, we're using a squared plus u squared. Let's look at our integral tables. What you see is number 72. Number 72 is exactly what we want. We've got a perfect square plus our variable squared. So let's grab that one. All right, I put 72's formula on the screen here. It's going to be equal to the natural log of our u, which is x plus 3, plus the square root of a squared. a is 4, so 4 squared is 16, plus our u squared, x plus 3 squared. Don't lose that negative 6 out front. And doing a little cleanup, we have negative 6 natural log of x plus 3 plus the square root of, and if you multiply out that x plus 3, you get x squared plus 6x, plus 9 and 16 is 25. And when we put it all together, the left half was just the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 25. 
The right integral became negative 6 natural log of x plus 3 plus the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 25. Always plus a constant at the end. And we have our antiderivative. And so that's how we can massage these problems. You have to be a little creative with the algebra to get them into the format we want. Then we can use the table to help us integrate. Take a look at these on the assignment. Practice several of these, and we will talk about them more in class. We will see you then.